Good evening. I am so glad that you are here tonight for our Holy Week Vespers service. This is a time when we are reading the different passages of scripture that are ascribed for each of the nights in Holy Week. Holy Week began on Sunday with what is called Palm Sunday when we uh, celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. And then each of the nights afterward continued to tell the story of the last week of his life, what some of the events are. And so we will read an Old Testament passage, a New Testament passage, and then we will get to hear from some of those who may have been present during the final week of Jesus' life. Often when we hear these scriptures, they become so familiar that it is difficult to hear them again with fresh ears. But during this week, we're going to hear from Mary, friend and disciple of Jesus. We'll hear from Simon Peter, also a disciple of Jesus. We'll hear from Judas, the one who betrayed Jesus, as well as a Roman soldier who was present at the crucifixion. And then finally, we will hear from Mary, the mother of Jesus. And so I invite you to be here each night at 7.30 as we listen for the word of God speaking to each of us. For today's scripture readings, we will begin with the Old Testament. It is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, in the beginning of that chapter. And the Old Testament passage presents that of a suffering servant image. This is part of the tradition that Jesus knew by heart. These were scriptures dear to him that he had known through his upbringing. They had laid the foundation and laid the backdrop for him as he continued his mission, his calling, and then for the New Testament, we're going to hear from the Gospel of John. That is in chapter 12. And we get to hear from Mary. It is the story of Mary pouring the oil on Jesus' feet and wiping them away with her hair. It is the passage where she got fussed at pretty badly because some thought that the money she spent on this expensive oil should have gone to money from the poor. And then we will meet Mary. And so I invite you now, if you would find yourself in a very comfortable space where you are able to receive the gifts that God is giving through the scriptures as they are told. Isaiah chapter 42 verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. 
See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Today's scripture is taken from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii? and the money given to the poor. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I was in the middle of the marketplace that day, and it hit me like an overwhelming wave of feeling. I loved him so much. It was a love beyond anything I'd ever known. Not romantic, not like a sibling, certainly like family, but he was so much more to me. He was teacher, he was priest, he was wise one, he was hope itself. And for the first time in those days before the terrible thing happened, I felt he might not be invincible. He told us, he had warned us, he had been saying this all could ha this could happen all along, but I just couldn't imagine it. He was so eternal, it seemed, like nothing, not even God, would dare take him away from any of us. But the tension was building. I will beg him, I thought, to not go to Jerusalem. Just go back to Galilee, go to the hills, go to Nazareth, go anywhere but Jerusalem right now. But even as I said this to myself, I knew that he wouldn't go. This is where he was supposed to be, with all these people gathered for Passover. Jerusalem is where he had to be, and I knew he might never leave. I suddenly became aware that I was standing stock still oblivious to all around me here in this marketplace, and I began to double over with fear. But just as I did, my eyes came to rest on the stall to my right, a jar, a most beautiful jar of anointing oil. The seller offered it to me for a price that seemed outrageous, and I didn't care. No price could compare with the price my teacher, my master would pay, and so I bought it. Whether in life or in death, my beloved friend would need it. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this? Oh, my soul, what wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for 
my soul. Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. To God and to the Lamb who is the great I am. While millions join the theme I will sing. I will sing while millions join the theme. I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm Mary's anointing of Jesus was part of a long-standing tradition of honoring someone with a sweet-smelling oil and a combination of very many herbs. This was used to consecrate kings. It was used for burial. And so in this one act, Mary shows her love her devotion, her honor for her friend and her teacher, Jesus. And so I invite you to think about what are the ways this week that you can show your love and your devotion to your teacher, your Christ, Jesus. Let us pray. Most holy God, we thank you that you have given us the gift of scripture. We thank you for the example that Mary set, that she was not afraid to show her devotion, her love for Jesus. And so as we go into this holy week, may we have the courage and the faith to do the same. In your son's precious name, amen.